Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we're taking a look at Character Creator 4 and I'm giving the five cool features that I love about this brand new update. Character Creator 4 of course comes with a whole lot of features and all that, but there are five major features I love about this new installment of Character Creator and I'm here to share them with you guys. So with Character Creator 4 opened right here, the very first one is this, that if you go over to the preference, you can now customize the navigation to your liking. So before what you had here was the default iClone navigation tool, but right now you can change this to whatever you want. If you're working with 3D Studio Max, Maya, the industry version of Blender or the Blender 2.8 and above keybinds for navigating, you can now choose and customize this however you want. This is definitely going to be very useful as artists would no longer need to retrain their muscles whenever they switch from one DCC app to another. Another cool and interesting feature that is now available in Character Creator is the characters. So there are character tweaks and controls and also some lighting features that just simply make Character Creator 4 stand out. So by default, if you go over to the content section and you go over to actors, you'll be able to navigate through the characters. And if you go to the base, you would see the Character Creator characters. Now Character Creator 4 now ships with brand new set of Character Creator assets, which you can actually work with. Now, regardless of whatever asset that you're working with, if you simply choose to drag and drop in a character directly on your viewport, you'll be able to see this character in a different light. A different light in the sense that the lighting for your characters have now been updated and it makes more sense the way that this looks. Contrary to what you had in Character Creator 3, Character Creator 4 now ships with a better lighting system, shadows can now be cast on the floor and you can now take advantage of this. So in previous versions of Character Creator, there was no foot contact and hand contact, but that is now something that is available. And speaking about availability, we now have the actor build. So with actor build, you can actually get a low resolution version of your model, which goes ahead to tie all your components together and give you a low resolution version that you can use for both games and populating your scene. This is definitely something that would be a lot useful for most artists, especially if you really want something that can work, but that doesn't require so much memory to execute. There is also the beautiful instant level of detail. Now with the instant level of detail, you can even push the actor build a bit further. So in certain cases, you might need a low, low resolution model that would be existing way somewhere in the background. And with the instant level of detail, you can select the percentage, the texture size, and you can get the model that you're going for. Now with all that, you can even push the bounds even more. So the characters that you converted to actor builds and also the ones that you did with the instant level of detail, these also supports the animation. So to whatever character that you're working with, the animation still exists. And this is one amazing feature that Character Creator brings to the table that I particularly like. So instead of traveling to different apps to actually get a low resolution and then baking all that and finally transferring animation back and forth, you can do all of these inside Character Creator without moving from one DCC app to another. There is a good set of animation features that are now available in Character Creator. So Character Creator 4 now ships with this. You can now play back your animation directly in Character Creator. Contrary to what you had in Character Creator 3, you can actually preview your characters, see how they behave, and you can even do way more stuff. So in this case, if you go over to the motion section and you click, you can select a given motion and you can use this to test out the calibration of how the weight painting on your model would look like when you start animating with it. So this now gives you even way more stuff to work with. As in this case, if we simply switch our model to walk and we press the playback button, we can see how the swaying of the neck, the legs, and also the body parts of this model would respond to several motions. And that's not all. There is also a turn table. So we can set a turn table for our model. So let's bounce this all the way back, set a turn table, go all the way here and turn on activate. So if we activate this, we can choose the direction that the turn table moves. So I can press the playback and you can get a full turn table of your model right here in Character Creator. So you no longer need to move over to iClone to do all of that stuff. You can now do all these things within the timeline and control them according to how you want. And to me, whatever tool that would actually limit the number of tools I'll get to work with just to achieve a particular result is something I'm always interested in trying out. And of course, it also makes sense to mention that the expression morphs have now gotten a facelift. So previously in Character Creator 3, we did have 60 plus morphs 
And it's quite interesting to know that when you're doing your facial motion capture right now, you have access to 140 plus blends that you can tweak from. All of these are flexibly upgradable and downgradable depending on the tool of choice. So the folks at Relution have actually made this very useful that in certain situations when you like to push the bounds of your facial performance, you can actually get that going. So instead of having very stale looks like this, you can push the bounds and actually push the envelopes of what you want. And this is one of those things that just simply makes sense. Another very interesting feature for me with Character Creator 4 is you being able to bring in any animation right into Character Creator. So in this case, if you already have a rig or you have a character, for example, we have a character like this, we can go ahead and download this character and drive that in Character Creator. So you no longer need to use several tools just to retarget your animation to your characters. You can now drag and drop those characters directly in. So we, what we have here in Mixamo, we can simply go over to the download section and download this model. So we can choose to download the model with or without skin. And if we just want to get the animation in, we can download without skin and click on the word download. And with the motion downloaded, we can click, drag and drop directly into Character Creator on the model without any retargeting done. And Character Creator automatically will identify the profile. And all we need to do is click on convert to convert that motion or retarget that motion to our model. So once we have that, we can press the playback button and you can see that right here. Now you can also notice that we still have the turntable with the animation playing back. And if you already have a model that you want to bring in, you can simply get that in. In this case, right here on Mixamo, we can go over and download this with the skin and click on the word download. And this is a case where you already have a model with motions in it. So what you can do is to simply click, drag and drop in here and Character Creator will try to confirm if you're dragging in a character or a prop. So in this case, because we're dragging in an FBX, we're just going to select character. And then if this character is a CC character, we can select that. If it's a non-standard CC character, we have to select it. And if it's a creature, then we can actually select that right here. And now since we're going with a humanoid character, we're just going to select that, click on the word apply and get that loaded right in. Automatically, Character Creator recognizes that this is a Mixamo file and once we click on OK, that would be loaded right in within our viewport. And of course, if you like to apply motions, you can click on the motion section, go over to the motion that you want, and you can apply that motion right here. And for those who are thinking, what about the motion that we saw on Mixamo? Of course, if you like to apply that motion on this model, you can. All you need to do is click and drag directly into Character Creator, drop it on the model itself, and it would identify the character. So we want it to be on the current character, click on the word convert, and automatically that motion will be assigned to the model. This is just one easy way of getting your models from wherever and bringing them directly into Character Creator without going through third parties to retarget them or get them to work as it is supposed. And you can already see that with a simple set of clicks that we have all we want happening right here in Character Creator. And of course, if there are parts that you like to change or tweak or probably do a proper characterization on, you can simply click on the characterization feature and this would open up the characterization panel. So with the characterization panel, you have access to the human IK, which you can use to do lots of things. Regardless of this, there is also other set of features that include the edit spring, which is also very useful and lots of people would want to test out the adjusting floor contact just in case you have a floating model. And of course, you can turn this on as well to take advantage of that. Finally, Character Creator 4 now ships with something that I personally love. So we have physics and physics in terms of soft body and rigid body dynamics. So in a case like this where you have a model, if you press the playback button, you'd notice that we have this clot deformation happening. So in most cases, you probably want to have like clot deformation on your model, but getting this might not be the easiest thing. And now Character Creator now ships with this and you can actually make tweaks. Now, if you take a look at the modify section, you would notice that we have a new tab called the physics tab. Now within the physics tab, you can select the character, select a section within the model that you want to actually apply physics to, and you can proceed to start changing or playing with the cloth, the hair, and also the wind. Now, this would require a certain map to tell Character Creator where it should look at in terms of dynamic weight painting. So in this case, we do have this for the skirt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. And if you go over to the wind, you can see we have different variations. So let's bounce this all the way back and set this to low, press the playback button, 
and you notice that we have a very low wind happening. If I bounce this all the way back and set this to storm, let's make sure that we have that and set this back, press the playback button, you'd notice that we have a storm happening. So this has been done in such a way that if you're thinking about simulating wind, hair, or maybe you're trying to do clot, the soft body dynamics now exist in Character Creator alongside with the rigid body to get you exactly what you want. So this is more like it. Of course, there are lots and lots of cool things that are currently available in Character Creator right now. And for those who like to take a look at this, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. And of course, I would like to know what are the features that are most impressive to you and also what are the features that you're expecting in the next release of Character Creator. Tell me what you guys think about this one. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.